All right, so again, email marketing. I don't know what the hell to do with email marketing, but uh, I'm going to actually let you guys introduce yourselves real quick uh, and uh, tell us who you are and why you're on this panel. Ooh, there you go. Oh, thank All you. All right, so we'll start with Pat here. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Pat Flynn, smartpassiveincome.com. How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> Man, that was a bad idea. Sorry. <laughs> Do you know what? I didn't do it. Though. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Uh, so, you know, I've grown my email list to 180,000 over the last eight years, and most of that happened in the past two. So I'm here to share some tips that I've learned along the way to help you uh, potentially do the same or at least experience that rapid growth like I have and some more advanced uh, segmentation options that you might uh, have as well. Uh, no. No, Kagan. Taco champ. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, um, thank yeah, move it away. Yeah, um, <laughs> I can't talk. Um, I run AppSumo.com and Sumo.me.com. AppSumo, we've grown to about a million email subscribers. And then we've taken all the, the things that we've used to grow our own email list, and, and we saw the software called SumoMe, uh, which is helping 100,000 sites grow their own email list. My name is Chris Ducker, chrisducker.com. And um, number one, I don't like fish tacos. <laughs> Hashtag, just saying. You told me that a minute, a minute before, uh, a minute before yeah. the contest started. I learned that. Oh, good God. You're so dead, Brandon. <laughs> um, and uh, I have about 60,000 people on my email list. <coughs> Um, but I'm okay with that because apparently Cosmopolitan Magazine says size does not matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's how you use it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, happy to be here. You had to go there. <laughs> I am Erin Chase from $5dinners.com and I have, um, I think, about 125000 across a couple different um, course membership and main newsletter lists. And I am here to keep these guys in line. Woo. And I also don't like fish tacos now. I don't think I'll ever eat one ever again. <laughs> yeah, that was the last fish taco for all of you. All right, and my name is Brandon. I'm with BiggerPockets.com. We have somewhere between five and 600,000 emails on our email list, which just crossed 600,000 today, I think, actually. So uh, that's why, apparently, I'm, uh, you know, PT made some poor decisions and asked me to moderate this. So with that, we are going to talk about, again, leveling up internet marketing. So I'm going to start off with a very uh, easy, couple easy questions, just so we get to know exactly what they're doing for email before we get into, you know, a little bit more advanced stuff. So first of all, uh, let's start with how often you guys send emails and uh, I mean, we'll just start here with Pat how often do you send them sure so I you know if you look at my email list I actually send emails every day but not emails every day to each person it depends on when you subscribe because there are two kinds of emails uh, autoresponder emails which are emails that uh, get sent out sequentially over time after people subscribe and then there's of course the broadcast emails and so people go through a specific process within my autoresponder it's about once a week and then I often add a broadcast once a week on top of that. So about two emails a week per person. Uh, but depending on different products that they purchase, they may get more. Um, so AppSumo, we do two sales emails every week. Uh, with SumoMe, we do one a week, uh, either a promotion or education. And then what I generally think of is, is like, you can, shoot, I basically call it the spouse test. How many people here are married? All right. What's the open rate on your spouse emails? It's like 100%. <laughs> is a reply rate like 100%? Right? It's like really good. Right? It's really <laughs> high. So, but you always open their emails. So I think it's like you can send as many emails as they want to get. Right? There's actually, with AppSumo, when we started it, people were saying, why aren't you sending more emails? Because I didn't really want to bug them. But they had a lot uh, more, uh, let me say it better. Your customers probably want to hear from you more than you think if they like you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a bit like Pat, you know, depending on when anybody opts in, they're, they're, they're going to go straight into an onboarding <coughs> funnel of some variety. At any one time, there's going to be sort of four to six emails going out in that first month. The first month is critical uh, because that's where they're learning about me, learning my style, what I'm going to have for them, what they're gonna, how I'm going to serve them, the kind of content they're going to get out of me and stuff like that. And then every single Friday I send a digest email which kind of wraps up every piece of content that I've created that past week for them. So that would include blog posts. It would include podcast episodes. It will include any videos that I put on YouTube. And it'll also include any live Facebook or Periscope videos that I publish as well. Uh, and then once they go into that funnel, it's just a matter of, you know, product launches and all that kind of stuff. But on an average week, I'd say, uh, I reckon probably everyone is getting around two emails a week from me, something like that. We have a daily RSS email because I have um, a content going up on the site every day. And then we have a weekly RSS email, which is the most popular. And then we also have 
the you know prospect emails, the sequences, the short-term prospect sequence. We have the long-term uh, nurture, the short-term nurture, the long-term nurture for prospects, and then we have the member content as well. So mm -hmm. it's just it's you know I've created this little machine, so it just kind of runs. Awesome. All right, and I was going to do this before we started, but I got carried away with the, uh, tacos. With the tacos. But uh, could I actually get a quick paper from everybody? I want everybody to stand up real quick. I know this is weird again, but there's a reason for this. All right, we want to get an idea. Uh, as a panel, we talked about this beforehand. We want to get an idea of who exactly the audience is and how big your lists are and what you know how advanced you are. So do me a favor. If you have no list or less than 1,000 people on your list, sit down. Okay. If you've okay, got, don't be ashamed, guys. Yeah, it's it's okay. just fine. Don't worry. If you've got 10,000 people or less, sit down. Okay? If you've got, we'll go, how about what? 50,000 people or less, sit down. All right. 100,000 people or less, sit down. Awesome. All right. How about, uh, we'll go big. 500,000 people or less, sit down. Okay. So that gives us a pretty good idea of kind of where the breakdown is. Yeah, everyone, yeah, you guys rock. <laughs> All the winners in the back. <laughs> All right, so again, it kind of helps us know exactly what level to put the sats. Uh, what about, real quickly, could you guys say who you're using for email service right now? Who's sending your emails? Uh, RSS is FeedBlitz, and for all of the prospect and uh, customer member is Ontraport. Uh, I am Infusionsoft. You are. I am. <laughs> I am the company that takes all your money every month. That's what I do. Nice. Uh, for my personal, I use AWeber, and then for our business, we custom built it on top of SendGrid. Nice. Uh, and I'm using ConvertKit. Woo. Okay. And what about email opener rates? Are you currently seeing on your, your let's just say, a, a newsletter type email that you might send out? I know there's obviously a lot of lists here, but like a, a newsletter you're going to send out to a bunch of people. What's a typical open rate you see? Uh, it's interesting because my open rate has changed over time based on how I've onboarded people. So in my onboarding process, they sort of take a quick survey question that allows them to self-segment into a specific component of my list. Based on a survey that I ran last year, I've understood that there are basically three different buckets in my audience, and those are people who have yet to start a business at all, people who have started a business but are making less uh, than $500 a month, and then people who are making more than $500 a month. So in my very first email that gets sent out to people who subscribe to, the, to my main list, I say, hey, which one of these are you? And they self-select into one of those. And then the open rates, because uh, before my open rates, when it was just one giant pool that I was putting everybody into, everybody was getting the same message. My open rates were actually uh, relatively high. They were about 25%, which in, in the industry of online marketing, that's, that's quite high. Now the open rates within those segments are 60 to 80%. Whoa. And it's because the language is tailored specifically to them. And they see those first emails come in. They know they are in the right spot. The people who sign up for the very first bucket, the no business at all, their first email subject line that they get is welcome future <coughs> entrepreneur. If I said that to somebody who was more advanced, they would think that they were in the wrong spot. So I'm sending exactly what they need and they know that they're in the right spot. And because of that, they're opening more emails, the click-through rates are higher, more revenue at the end. Um, two things. So for personal, you should be hitting at least 25% minimum. Otherwise, your people don't like you. That's really <laughs> what it comes down to. So if you have a lower than that, you're probably, if you're, especially if you have like a sub 50,000 person list, uh, for lists over about 200,000, you'll probably be somewhere about 10 to 15% open rate, uh, especially if it's more transactional. Uh, a few suggestions related to that. I disagree with Pat. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. We'll have some drama. Go. Uh, I think most of you, pretty much everyone here should not be worrying about segmentation. Uh, I think it's a distraction, and I actually don't think it'll really significantly change your business, where you should be focusing on other things like how to double the amount of people signing up to your list. It's definitely not a day one thing. Let's get that straight. Thank you for bringing that yeah. up. It's something that I, I, love, I learned I love recently. You. I love you, too. Okay. At what, what level, what level should people... Y'all are so cute. You know, like, what so number? Icky. I would say, like, well, the, the two things I would suggest, I think Chris and Pat both said, and I'm just going to repeat it, but I'll give you guys a credit. Um, one is that you guys should have autoresponders for, like, months. Literally, I've, my personal one has a three-month autoresponder, where every week it's literally... I took all my content, uh, my emails from the past two years, and I sorted them by open rate, and I just send one email a week for the first three months someone joined. So those people are like getting the best stuff, uh, and I don't have to do shit for three months. Um, what was the other question? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering oh. at, what, at what level oh, I would say, well, start caring about two, two things with that. So one, if you're, until you're at like 100,000, Emails, like, don't sweat it. It won't make that much of a difference. Well, there's certain segmentations like, that are important. For example, if you're selling product, you want to know who is a customer and who is not a customer. That's, like, basic segmentation, correct? Would you agree with me on that? 
<laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I just want to make it clear. No, I think your point, it doesn't, the number doesn't matter. I would just say for most people, like you're at 180,000, like as you're getting larger, that segmentation will add a lot more value. Correct. But I think your, your point is right, where like buyers versus non buyers kind of right. stuff. I mean, you can get crazy with it. I will, I'm, here are all the males, here are all the females, here's yeah. this age and that age. It can get insane. And once, I mean, even with three buckets only, it's, it's pretty insane to keep track of everybody. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we did that. So we built all this like custom algorithm to figure out what kind of where to segment people. And then we did all this test for a year, and then it made no difference. And so that's why I think maybe I'm more biased than others. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, just to kind of encourage, so like half of you guys are less than 1,000, right? Uh, so less, ha, less than 1,000, but here's what's crazy about that. It's really more the quality, as Chris was saying, because if each one of those 1,000 people is giving you 1,000 bucks, that's a million dollars. So when someone comes in and is like, I have a 50,000 person mailing list, they may only have like a 5% open rate, or no one gives a shit about them. So don't sweat how big the list is, more about the quality and the relationship you have with each one of the people. So for like, my personal list, I literally, for the first thousand people, I know them. Business, every first thousand people, I know them. So think about that with your own list. So, but y'all are saying the same thing now because it's like personalization, right? Like when somebody opts in for, to learn about freezer cooking, for me, I want to know, are they struggling with time? Are they how to fit it in, how to fit freezer cooking into their life? Are they struggling with, I've never done freezer cooking before. I'm in a little bit different boat because I'm talking to consumers, right? right? So then I can write to the person who's struggling with time and say, you need to do this, this, and this, and then you'll be ready to join our membership. I'm also selling a product. So it's a little bit different, but that personalization component, I think could be the future of email marketing because we're talking, like, it's like we're at my kitchen table. Right, like that's how I that's how I think about email. Like we're we're having a conversation about how you're struggling with time, or you're struggling with your family eats the same four things every single week, week after week. Mm. Let's add some variety, right? Yeah. So. Makes sense. What about you guys' open rates? Um, right or right around. Well, I just looked. Forty eight percent. Okay. Great. So my my uh, news my weekly newsletter opening uh, right is between twenty to thirty percent. Um, I would say probably more towards the lower end on that. But it is really kind of, let's just throw the spaghetti up against the wall kind of mindset with that newsletter. Um, but then, you know, I have, other, I have other lists that I might send the exact same content to that are just, you know, they're, they're either buyer lists or they're, uh, you know, prospect lists for a, for a launch that I just did. And all I need to do is just tweak the subject line or tweak the first paragraph or the first sentence, and things just a little bit nicer on the open side of things. I will say that, um, and obviously this is realistic to, to, to take this on board, is that whenever I have a paid customer, right, someone has actually sent me money at some point, the rates go up through the roof. So for example, I, I, I have a, a membership community called youpreneur.com, and with youpreneur, uh, we have a weekly email that goes out, kind of, and it, it basically what it does, it highlights the top five conversations from our private forums every single week, and we also highlight any proprietary content that we publish that week as well. And that open rate is over 80%, sure. but they're paying me every single month to ultimately stay on that list. So it makes perfect sense to have a very, very high open rate on that, that email. That makes sense. Hey, Brandon, really quick, how many people would you say are in this room right now? I don't know, 150? 150. So I know a lot of you, when you sat down after the first one, maybe you have more than 150 people. People, no, I said it. You, those email list numbers are actual people. Imagine getting in front of this room and speaking to 150 people. That would probably freak a lot of you out, right? But you have more than that, many of you, on your email list. And so realize, even if it's 1,000 people, that's 1,000, like that's 10 times almost this number of people in a room and they're there they've given you permission to send them stuff they want to hear from you and so just keep that in mind even though your numbers are small they're powerful even even two people and i like i like what noah said earlier if you have 100 people get to know every single one of their names what are their problems what are their pains reach out to them that's your advantage starting out small i cannot possibly reach out to every single person on my email list anymore you who had sat down earlier absolutely can and that's going to help you stand out help you build raving fans much faster than anybody else can so how do you do that i mean do you just send each person an individual email you set that up in your autoresponder what do you guys suggest for getting to know your audience i uh, mean <coughs> at my size i'm sorry no, no um please. i at my size i reach out to five people every single month randomly and i try to get them on a skype call and it's funny because a lot of times they're like is this an autoresponder email and you're just <laughs> trying to get my phone number or something and i'm like no uh, but those conversations even though it's only five people are some of the most golden conversations I've ever had about my business. And they've helped change the direction of my business and helped me increase my growth and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, but if you're just starting out, I mean, 
in one of your emails, ask for a reply and just start a conversation mm -hmm. there. Have it even be a part of the autoresponder. Hey, tell me what's your biggest struggle right now? It's automated. You're going to get these emails constantly about products you can create, blog posts that you can write, podcast episodes, guests you can have on, all based on what you know your audience is saying, not what you guess they're saying. So that's how I would approach it. Okay. Anybody else want to jump in? No, I'll just say that you know quality for me has always been way more important than quantity. Like I'd rather have 500 people on a list that open all of my emails that click on all my links to consume all my content and then share it to their friends. Uh, I would much, much rather have a smaller list. I think here's the thing. People get wrapped up and oh, I've got 100,000 people on my list and all the rest of it. Like I call a massive amount of BS on that most of the time yeah. because you and I both know that the very large majority of those lists are falling on deaf ears at almost every time. Whereas if you have a very small list and like Pat's saying, um, you can truly get to know who's actually on that list. At that point, you can, you can serve them better. And for me, it's about serving. It's not about selling. I'd rather serve somebody. Because if I serve somebody right, then they're gonna come back to me with questions, with problems. And it's up to me as the entrepreneur that I am to produce those solutions to those problems. Because that's all it really is at the end of the day. Whether it's solutions by creating content and emailing it to them, whether it's solutions to creating a course and then selling it to them, whether it's solution to create and putting on an event so people can cure entrepreneurial loneliness. It doesn't matter. It's all about the solutions. And so bring, bring on a list of 1,000 people <coughs> over 100,000 for me, as long as they're all highly engaged in, in what I'm all about. Yeah, I can add a few more things. So one thing, so we talk about open rates at 30%, right? Can you guys imagine going to a bank and you give someone a dollar and then they give you 30 cents back? That seems weird, right? No? Yes. Yeah. You're like, this, I guess it's not here. Weird. Financial people. <laughs> wow, that's a great return. <laughs> <laughs> so like, but, but think about well, it. Well, it is a financial blogging conference. It they is, should know I've better. Heard, right. Well, so a few things just to think about. And I'll tell you a few things that I do that I like. But that means that like 70% of the people don't give a fuck. Do you guys get that? That means you're working so hard for 30% return. Yeah, oh, sorry. No swearing? <laughs> No, but it's just kind of strange if you think about it conceptually. You're working so hard to get a person, and only a third of every person is actually going to even open it, and you're happy about that. What's that? I said a third of every person. Yeah, a third of every person. I only get you're like up to knee. Like the legs or something. <laughs> right? It seems strange. Like I want the full body. So, uh, so a few things that I would recommend. So this is something I call double opens. Uh, so if the thirty percent have opened it, ignore them. A week later, what I'll do is I'll take the seventy percent, and I'll change the subject line and resend it. Yeah. And so that'll generally get you another 20% mm -hmm. overall mm -hmm. uh, uh, opens. Another thing, especially with sales emails, do a lot of recaps. That's one thing we do, especially build relationships. Like, hey, you might have missed this. So like today or yesterday with Sumo Me, um, we had a, a promotion going on. And we said, hey, you might have missed it because you opened it uh, but didn't buy. So we let them know. So if someone opens or doesn't open, you can also resend it to them. Uh, two other things that I like doing, Pat mentioned it, just as a thing that it's a great way to build your business, whether you're a software product or a blog. Have your first email be something they reply to and just have it be one specific question. So I think with OK Dork, my personal site, it's like, you know, what is one thing I could write about that make your day better? Or with Sumo Me, which is the software to grow your email list, the question is like, uh, how can we help you grow your email list faster with our tool? And then they reply and then someone responds to them. And it's a great way to start building a relationship. Uh, and then the last part that I've tried to do, especially for people smaller, try to move it off of email. And what I mean by that is Pat talked about Skype. So use Skype, Slack, Gtalk, AIM. I don't know, what else is there? ICQ. ICQ. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Snail mail, whatever it is. Well, snail mail, don't do snail mail. What's that? IRC. IRC. Phone. So but the point being, though, is that like when you send an email, you're waiting, right? So you like send this thing, and you're just like, well, I hope money comes, right? Or I hope someone responds. But if you can actually move more of your relationships to like direct one-to-one -one or faster communication, you can get responses faster. So like AppSumo, I think the first 10 people, like Ruben Gamez and a few of these other guys that I'm still really good friends with, it was on Skype, and we still talk on Skype. I'll just say one last thing as well. For me, I I'd actually d I kind of don't want my list to get that big. Stay with me here, okay? <laughs> because every 90 days, I actually cull my list automatically inside of Infusionsoft. So every 90 days, if you haven't opened one of my emails that I've sent you in the last three months, you will be forcibly removed from my email list without even knowing. <laughs> I don't even send you an email or anything. Because if you're not opening my emails, why the bloody hell am I selling them to you in the first place? It's pointless, right? So I might as well just remove them off the list. And that actually keeps the list small, which saves me money, because we all know with a very large majority of email service providers, the more emails you have on your list, the more you have to pay, right? So I kind of like doing that regularly as well. Do you guys all do that? Do you guys remove people? 
Who doesn't? I, I run a re-engagement campaign, and then okay. if they don't respond to that, they it's get like trying to get your ex-girlfriends back. <laughs> I mean, they're gone. No, like, no. The only, thing, the only thing that I would just add uh, to Chris's point, though, is it also helps your deliverability rate. So a few of you guys aren't thinking about doing it. So if you're sending emails yeah. to Gmail and they're seeing they're not getting open, then they're going to start moving you to spam or other tabs. Yeah. So to Chris's right. point, like I'd encourage you. We do it every six months. Yeah. And to add one more thing you guys said earlier about the reply to, if you can get the first email to reply to, that can often keep them that email then in your in the person's main primary tab on, right. on Gmail mm. versus promotion, spam, whatever. Like, and it's it's gold for content yeah. you know, curation. I mean, like I, I actually, the email that I send emails to, I don't personally, or from rather, I don't personally manage it. One of my VAs does. So whenever we get those emails back, and yes, my first email says, what, what kind of content do you want to see from me? This is what I'm all about. How could I help you? And it's everything from you know personal branding to you know you name it. And whenever we get replies back from people, my VA then goes through that. And for every single reply that she gets with ideas on content, she'll go into a spreadsheet and she'll just kind of log it with like a little tally. And once we get to about 10 or 15 kind of little ticks next to that piece of content idea, I'll go ahead and create the content and serve my audience that way. But I don't know how many ticks any one, one idea has got until my VA turns around and says, hey boss, just so you know, we've got you know, 23 people waiting for a piece of content on you on how to use Facebook Live. So now I'll go ahead and create a piece of content. That's cool. And it's just a great way of continually kind of serving your audience as well. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so on that note about the virtual assistants, how many of you guys manage your own email entirely? How many of you have assistants that help with that? Uh, and uh, as part of that question, do you respond personally to emails? Do you, do you have canned responses set up? Or how do you manage that workflow? Both and both and both. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have, we have uh, one inbox. There are about six people involved in different places. And we have a, two people on a customer service team. And um, I, I'm trying to get myself out of the main inbox, and we're in, the tr in that transition period right now. But I, I tag emails, and I forward emails, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. I bit. average about 200 emails a day to my main email, um, and which is quite strange because a lot of the time I don't even mention it anywhere. People are just guessing it. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want any more emails. Um, but uh, it's not easy. It's not hard to, to, to guess it. But um, I have a I, so basically I the way I right the way I work it the way I work it is uh, so my VA gets to work before me in the morning. I start working around 10 a.m. and by the time I've kind of logged in and and I've checked out my email, she's gone through about 70 percent of it. And so what that does is it's all canned responses because we get the same questions over and over and over again. Obviously, just like any other email address, we get a whole bunch of spam. A bunch of stuff is either unsubscribed. We use uh, unroll.me to unsubscribe from all the crap that I subscribe to to get that free ebook that I never read that sits on my computer. <laughs> What is that about? Oh, can we um, talk about that later? Are we <laughs> yeah. talking about opt-ins? Can we talk sure, about that yeah, later? Okay, totally yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, so, and then by the time I've got into it, like I said, the large majority have already been taken care of. But I will say, we use camera responses. We have about 70 of them, I think, at any one time. And even though they were written by me, and, and I mean that genuinely, they were put together by me, when my VA sends it out, it actually says, sent on behalf of Chris Ducker. So... It's not like I'm trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. Like I'm very, I'm being very clear. This is being sent by one of my teams, but I wrote this response in regards to that question, so I hope it's helpful. And nine times out of ten, and this comes with a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of training, a little bit of time invested. But nine times out of ten, my VA now is so good that you know she'll actually try and get people to come back to my website as part of replying to that question to that email. So somebody might say, you know, I've, I've just hired my first virtual assistant. What's the best way to train them? Well, we'll have two or three paragraphs already pre-written, which we'll copy and paste and stick in there. But then my VA will also say something along the lines of, and you can also find this 4,000-word post on how to work with virtual assistants productively. And so not only am I replying and giving them their feedback, but I'm also now getting another visit to my website that can hopefully have somebody to click on an affiliate link or buy one of my products, whatever it is. I was gonna say my VA is myself. Um, <laughs> it's not that funny. Uh, how many people? <laughs> it is how now. many people like in the morning? You like what's the first thing you do? Do you guys check your email? Yeah. yeah. No. How many people here check their email first thing in the morning? It's like a fucking. It's like Christmas every day, right? <laughs> it's just like like I hope it's a fucking leather jacket. I really hope. <laughs> um, so I'll just oh give you a few God. things that I think about with email. Um, 
So email, here's a very simple way to think about it. The more emails you send, the more emails you're going to receive. That's it. You're sending a bunch of emails, guess what? You're going to get a bunch back. You like getting email? Send a lot. You don't want a lot of email? Don't send. Um, what's that? <laughs> so it's really a function of that. You send a bunch of emails, you're going to get a bunch. Uh, one thing, that, a few other things that I'd recommend for just email management, shit like that. I unsubscribe from everything or use filters if they don't have the unsubscribe link. That shit adds up a second a day times 10 emails times 365 is like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It adds up. So actually go unsubscribe instead of just delete. If there's a newsletter, not AppSumo, not Sumi, not Pat, <laughs> not Noah, not anybody up here. Uh, unsubscribe from those other ones. Do it right now. Go on your phone. Like go look for, like go on your phone probably right now and probably find an email you just like always ignore. Right? Just yeah. unsubscribe. Um, the other thing is keyboard shortcuts. You guys doing any of that shit with Gmail? Like text, text expander? Text expander. Or no, Gmail, you can enable shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Most of you guys probably know. Go like study it. If you hit shift question mark, it'll show you all the ones uh, to do. And that'll save you a bunch of time with email. That's it. Uh, I have an episode of the SPA podcast, episode 115, which was an interview with my assistant who was hired specifically to help me tackle my email. Because when I hired her, I had over 9,000 unread emails in my inbox. <laughs> and I just felt all this anxiety. Every time I saw a new email, I was like, I'm sorry, but I'm going to let you down because I'm not going to answer you. So I hired her, and she helped me tackle uh, with the specific process that we use in terms of her going into my inbox first, reading the emails, and then she becomes the one who puts it over here because I'm the only one that can answer it. Or she answers it with a canned response. Or she gives it to the technical team because it's a technical question. So she's that person that sees all the emails. I don't even look at my main inbox. I only go into my folder which says urgent. And that's the only one I look at. You never peek. You gotta peek. <laughs> I peek sometimes. Uh, <laughs> we all like to peek every now and then. <laughs> I knew this was coming with these guys. Like yeah, that. right, right. <laughs> um, but no, that, that episode was really helpful. And the, one, the, the couple things she taught me, she was like, you don't have to respond right away. And I was like, I don't. And then she's like, okay, here, don't respond to any emails for 24 hours. We're going to see if your business and your, is, is okay. And that was hard for me to do. Because I didn't want more emails, and I was like worried that something was going to blow up, and nothing blew up. So that was a huge realization for me. And then another thing, I think this was from Tim Ferriss. He says, whenever somebody emails you, that's them wanting your time. Mm. And you need to take control of that. You need to realize that when you go in your inbox, you're allowing other people into your life. And how much do you want to have that happen? For me, I schedule when I go into my urgent box or peek every once in a while. <laughs> But I schedule it in, or else it's just going to be a madhouse. I'm never going to get any other work done. Well, on, on that topic, then how often do you guys check your email? I mean, what? How many times during the day? All fucking day. Yeah. All day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like, that's true. Because he answers in like three seconds. But it's here's true. Way to think about it, like you're, the, the way I break it down, and I think I'm just going to read what Pat said. Your email is your reactive time. Like you are never really, unless you're in sales. Anybody here in sales? Right. Unless you're in sales, you shouldn't be. Your email is you're not creating shit. Yeah. You're not doing email stuff. You're being proactive, making things. So I try to remind myself of that, of like, oh, if I'm on my email, I'm not making any money, I'm not creating anything new, I'm just consuming. Yeah. So I just try to get myself uh, out of that. Also, you don't have to reply. I think that, I don't know, do you guys feel the guilt too? Yeah. yeah. It's a really, I just start, well, this year I'm doing deleting. Like, hey, no, I really have this delete. <laughs> Before you finish reading it. Before you get attached. Delete, you go, right? <laughs> and you know what? Here's the thing. If the, someone really wants to get a hold of you, they'll get a hold of you. Yeah. And if, if I'm on someone's newsletter and I really want to see their newsletter, I will look for it. Yeah. So, but most people, they send you some cheap email and they expect a big response. Delete. So I train my VA to delete anything that the first time they email me. If they email me twice, then I'll take a look at it. Do you really? Yeah. yeah. It's actually crazy. Well, yeah, now I just told everyone you're going to email me twice. So we email you twice? If they email me twice, then I'll take a look at it. If it's like, a, hey, I just need your help, I have a question. Oh, yes. cool. You cool. ever get one of those emails where someone wants you or time, your expertise, a quote for a roundup post and any of that rubbish, right? And then you delete it, you yeah. do what he does, and you ignore it. And then like two days later, they'll email you with, hey, Chris, and I hate this, just bumping this to the top of your inbox. <laughs> Why are you bloody doing that? I deleted you in the first place. I don't want you in my inbox, you time-sucking bastard. What are you doing to me? I hate that. Have anybody ever sent one of those emails? See you outside, mate. No, hold on. <laughs> this guy right here. Hold on. So, oh, hang on, wait a minute. He's very, very big. I'm not going <laughs> to So I, I would actually disagree completely. Okay. Right? So we, we if, I don't I'm know, surprised. there's a lot of different services. like tout, So there's services like Tout App, Yesware. We use Outreach.io. And so we use it for recruiting. We use it for hitting up people for PR. 
Uh, we use it for um, talking to our customers because you can send automated emails that are pretty customized. But what was most fascinating to you, uh, unlike your point though, is that over 50% of the responses came on the second email. Mm -hmm. So most people are busy. They use their inbox as a to-do list. So it does help if you say, hey, I don't know if you saw this. I do see with but like that's okay, button. but don't bump it to the top of my inbox. That's just how do they like, bump you without it? No, but they actually, they, well, what I'm saying, like, <laughs> yeah, do it, but don't tell me you're doing it, right? <laughs> it's like cheating on your girlfriend and then actually telling her you do it. It's not the best move. It's not so the best sales strategy in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> and incidentally, on the matter of sales, very quickly, when two of you said, when you said, when you, <laughs> when you said, who, who's in sales? Like three of you put your hand up. You're all in sales. Yeah. Don't kid yourself. You're all in sales. Because if you're writing content and you want somebody to open the email, if you're creating a podcast and you want someone to put their earbuds in to listen to it, you're in sales. You are. You're in sales. Nice. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yes. All right. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, you know, there's a, uh, uh, you know, like a lot of those, like, yes, where you said, have that, like, they'll email you once. If you don't open it, they'll email you again. Or if you do open it, they'll change the responder. There's actually a pixel blocker you can put for Gmail. Do you guys use that at all? I use that. Yeah, I use that. So nobody knows if I open their email or not. So I can't get, like, hey, I saw you open my email. Yeah, but not on your phone. Yeah, not on your phone. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, so next question. I want to shift and talk a little bit, like we said, about uh, opting in. So I want to shift and talk about what to do going forward. So we talked a lot about what to do in the past. So what should people do going forward? And we'll start with building your list. Uh, how should people, especially the vast majority here that have under 10,000 people, what should they be doing now? Like, What's working for you now and what should they be doing going forward? Aaron? Okay, stop with the PDFs, please. <laughs> Who reads those? Like, Who's going to read a 300-page PDF after they opt into your email newsletter? Really? Would, has anybody read a 30-page PDF that they've opted in for? <laughs> Raise your hand if you have. You guys are rock stars. Okay, <laughs> short video is where this is going. Who's doing live videos? It's faster to consume. You consume it on your phone right here. How many opt-ins are happening on mobile? Can you read a PDF on mobile? Think about it. What do you guys think? Is she wrong? Got yeah, a good point. My mama told me never to mess with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just going to say, I you're I, awesome. Man. I see, I see a shift happening, <laughs> and and I I have I have a, a 15 minute video workshop, which is very long, but I've stepped it out for a membership program. It is part of a prospect, the intro to a prospect funnel, and I have a five minute video um, that is for ahead of my course, and and they work because it takes cold traffic and immediately warms them up to me immediately. So somebody who's never heard of $5 dinners or Aaron Chase, or now we're best friends. Now we're sitting at the kitchen table. I, I've seen a big shift in video, and I think it's going to continue to happen, especially with you know, Periscope first and Facebook Live. And it's so easy to take a Facebook Live video. Just plan it out. Plan your Facebook Live. That I'm going to use this as an opt-in. Slice out what you don't need, all the, hey, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. Slice that off, and then use that as your opt-in. And I, think, I just think it's more engaging than a 30-page PDF, unless you know, it's something you're super interested in, you're gonna read it later, but in that moment that you're catching people, video is what's gonna be most engaging. I agree with that. I agree with that because I'm, I'm a big you know, believer in my P2P relationship building principle or people to people. I believe that people wanna do business with other people more so nowadays than ever before. Um, and I think that video allows you to bust down those barriers a lot faster mm -hmm. than just the written word, for example. Um, the other thing that I really like about video is that you can repurpose the hell out of it everywhere. So you can shoot a video and send it as a as an opt-in magnet, but then you can also send turn it, it into you content. know an infographic, mm -hmm. or you can put it up on you can rip the audio and slam it up on a podcast. It, there's so many different ways to do it, um, and so I like video. I think video is very very personal. It's like it's kind of like being in their front room with yeah. them and they'll get to know you a lot faster through video but also with 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 like this reply right now it can drone on quite a bit and um <laughs> sometimes it's too much and you click and the whole thing is we want to become somebody's favorite favorite blogger favorite podcaster favorite whatever it is and if we drone on and on and on and on that's not going to happen because they're going to stop watching it. Right. And two, we don't want that two minutes happen. five minutes yeah. workshop in my case is a little bit longer but it's for a different reason but yeah I can add, so you asked like how to grow your email list? Sure, yeah. 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 So do you mind, do you guys want some tactic stuff? 
Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So there's two parts of your, your growing your email list. And you guys will well, I'll share some stuff. Is that cool? Uh, so it's basically like you need to get people there to the party. And then you need to give them the sodas. You need the booby traps so that they stick around, right? The, I call them booby traps. Uh, so a few things that I'll just go through a list of them and you guys can write them down. Number one, we have a product that we sell uh, called King Sumo. There's also a free service called Rafflecopter, uh, but it's giveaways. Giveaways is how we grew up, Sumo. Um, so we built it and we offer it called KingSumo.com. So, or Rafflecopter, I think it's free. Um, we use Sumo Me. It's free to use as well. That's a product that we've made. So basically, you need to ha if people come to your, your website, you need to have things that they can join your newsletter. Uh, only about 2% or less people on your website are going to ever take action right, to buy something. So you need something, an email list, to actually be able to communicate with the 98%. Um, a few other things. So on your opt-in, tell them, if you're, especially if you're small, tell them you're going to message them if they opt-in. And what, what do you guys think when I say that, though? Like if you put on your opt-in, it's like, hey, I'll personally reply to you if you join my newsletter. Like what do you guys most think I'm going to do? Yeah, right? You think I'm full of shit, right? Isn't it amazing that we don't trust anyone? <laughs> right? Or guess you. <laughs> uh, but so do that and actually respond. Right, is an amazing way to start a relationship with your customers. Like, especially like, are you you right there, the lady with glasses? Are you, yeah, yeah. Are you in personal finance? Teaching. What do you do? Education. Right. What do you educate about? Um, I work with teenagers, so I help people online entrepreneurs and millennials. Perfect. So what kind of so your opt-in could be like, hey, if you join today, I'll give you three tips personally. I'll listen to you and give you three tips to make your speeches better, and then people will be shocked, and then you have customers for life. Uh, so make a custom response where they're not going to expect you to actually respond. Blow their mind, and then you have them for life. Uh, I've said this a few. I'm going to just give you a few more. Is this okay? Roll, okay. Good. Roll. Uh, export from LinkedIn. I said this on a podcast recently, and people were blown. But all of your connections on LinkedIn, you can export. You go, literally just search LinkedIn export. Don't join, add them to a mailing list. I think that's really spammy. Mm -hmm. But you can email them and say, hey, guys, I'm starting a newsletter. Click here to join. And you can export like 100, 500, 1,000 from your LinkedIn contacts. Uh, number five. So how much is this conference? How much does it cost? Like 100 bucks? 200 bucks. 200 bucks. bucks. So there's like $40,000 in this room, right, of people, of money that PT made. Um, <laughs> or spent on all, this. Yeah, all of you guys at conferences do that. You're like, well, there's 1,000 people times that plus a sponsorship. PT is rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, point being is that, like, here's the thing that blows my mind. You're all like, man, how can I get any, uh, like, who here has got zero? Who here has got zero or one? Yes. J Jacob or Jakob? <laughs> okay, Yakov is at zero, right? What's your, if you start a newsletter, what are you going to email me about? I'm going to email you about how to avoid debt in college. Okay, how many people here are in college? Okay, you are? Are you in debt? Okay, go get her email. Walk over there. No, seriously, walk over there. Get her fucking email. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Number one! Number one! Yes! So... J Jacob, just the email, not the number, Jacob. <laughs> Don't... Don't take it too far, mate. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> yeah, borderline creepy. Well, all the single ladies. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> point being is that like you guys are like trying to do tactics. You're gonna learn some stuff. I'm gonna tell you. Pat's gonna tell you. All of us are gonna tell you. And then you're gonna go home and do nothing, right? More or less. Uh, so two <laughs> things. You will. That's what I do. I get all these great inspirations, and I go home and go back to work. Uh, so do two things. One. Look around you. Other people probably should be on your newsletters that are already here. Just go sign up other people here, right? Talk to your neighbor or go outside and be like, hey, what's your name? Hey, can I add you to my newsletter? That's how you do it. Um, and then try to do any of the things that tactic-wise. It starts <laughs> Number with one. 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 Number Good one. Job, one. Uh, <laughs> so you have people at the conference, right? And a lot of things that we're talking about today, like literally right after this, go do it. Because once you do it tomorrow, once you go to the party, once it's Sunday, within after 24 hours, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and then I got three more. Cool? Go. Go. All right. All right. Um, so three other ones. One, I, this one is probably offensive, but I'm going to do it. All right. So <laughs> write down, this is what I want you to do. So write down three people's email list or website that you want to take over. Then I'm going to call ISIS. ISIS is going to go get them. Then he, they're going to give you their business, right? And then you have to see the, ah, didn't say it that well. Uh, <laughs> point being, here's what you do. Write, literally everyone, write down the three people who have the email list that you want to steal. Right? The steal lists, right? So don't put New York Times, don't put Pat, don't put me or Chris or Aaron, because we're not going to do it. No one's taking us out, right? But write down the three people, and then, those, then all you have to do now is how do I get that person excited to promote me? 
right? So I call it the murder list because you take over their business. So write the three people that you'd like to kill, right? And then you get their business and you get all their customers and work backwards from they should be excited to want to share that. Uh, then two last ones. I call this the, the success tactic. I need better names. Uh, if you're good at branding, come hit me up. The murder one was much better. The murder one. Yeah. Yeah. That was, the ISIS that was one. Great. But no one, ISIS. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the success tactic is Pat has a course, right? Yeah. What's your course? Smart from scratch. And then has anybody bought it here? Anyone yeah, in Pat's course? It's only a small segment of my oh, life. Oh, it's not out yet. It's not out. No, you're not supposed to know about it, actually. Um, <laughs> well, forget it, what he just you said. You didn't hear anything. So here's what you do if you want to grow your email list. Find someone who's selling anything. Chris, you're selling something. What are you selling? Like, what's the product um, yours? Virtual assistant services. Has anyone bought a virtual assistant or used Chris's thing? You have, right? And have you had success? Say yes. Uh, <laughs> so, that's fine. That's Say bloody yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. I bet Pat Flynn planted that. I was about back to back say, you're planted back there. The same thing he would do to his mate. I tell you. <laughs> All right, but the, the, the tactic there, this is not going to work, obviously, for you. Um, <laughs> well, me, evidently. No, it, it, well, if you want to. So okay. Chris said he already had like 50 to 100,000 people. Chris is excited and incentivized to show that he's had successful people, right? So if you are buying anyone's product, if you are anyone's customer, if anyone's like member or anything like that, they are incentivized to show that you've been successful. So let them know and work with them to get them to promote you. And like we've done that with AppSumo and SumoMe. We want to show that people are buying our stuff and getting results. So use like the student technique. Uh, to get your mentor to promote you or whatever, the people you're buying stuff from. So that's a few. Nice. All right. Pat, what you got? So I got one quick one for you. Uh, go into your analytical tool, Google Analytics or whatever, find your top post, and then create a content upgrade for it, which is a PDF file, but not a 30-page book. Maybe it's a Thank checklist you. or a quick start guide or, or a, a <laughs> list of tools related to that thing that you can then exchange for an email. And you know that people are already going to that post because it's one of your most popular posts. Stick it in there. They're going to want to get more. And it's a quick and easy way to hit them while they're hot. Yeah, when Periscope was real hot last year, I was on it pretty much daily building my list. And a lot of the times I would say if I, was, if I, would, li if I would go live five times in a week on Periscope, at least three of those five times my CTA would be, hey, if you want to know what kit I'm using to scope live, just go to chrisducker.com forward slash scope kit. And they will go ahead and visit that URL and download a one page PDF, which had basically, you know, the phone I was using, the mic I was using, little diva light that I was using, and so on and so on and so on. And um, guess what all those links were? Affiliate, affiliate links, links. Yeah. to Amazon. So it worked really okay. well. Can I do one more? Go. All right, so you all have your phones here. Let's just do this together. I'll do it with you. You guys ready? Get your phone out. This is like why I want to encourage you to be like distracted. Get your phone out. If you, have, if you don't have an iPhone, I can't help you. Um, so if you have an iPhone, right, let's just go to your settings and then change your signature right now to your newsletter. Right? So you want to go your... Because you literally probably send between 20 to 100 emails every day. Times that by 365, blah, blah, blah. That's a lot. Uh, and then people probably forge your email. So, like, go to your settings. Right? I think it's settings. What is it? Mail? Is that where it is? Yeah. And then on the bottom, there's signature. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And then just write. Yeah, let's all do it together. Yeah, it says sent from my iPhone. Yeah, yeah delete that. Yeah. You're doing free That's ads? Are they paying you for that? <laughs> <laughs> they don't even give you money. So yeah, write something. You guys want to do it? <laughs> I, don't do it. <laughs> I don't use the mail app. I'd have to switch it in Gmail. Use the Gmail app. I'm going to say No, it's a great Pat. idea. That's genius. All right, go follow Pat Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you can do it all of them. But who Thanks, else? I'll go find it. Anyone do it? Anyone do this right now? Who here is doing it? What are you going to write? No, just say, like, go check out my newsletter, fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, let's chat Mama, more. Please, semicolon, thanks. Can you just change it to the homepage URL? That's something that they would act. Like, so right now, if I email you, it says, like, uh, come eat tacos with me. And then it's, like, a jobs page. Right? And I get a comment. Like, once in a while, people are like, and I forget that it's even there because I'm just sending emails. So, yeah, if you have a phone, just do it right now. And it's one of these things where, like, it compounds and you never have to think about it and it just keeps working for you. That's cool. All right, so moving on before we do some Q&A here in a second, but last kind of question before then. Going forward, 2017, people in this room, like what is uh, some changes you guys see happening that people should really start to pay attention to in your email marketing? Like what, what didn't maybe didn't, wasn't a thing in the past and is becoming a thing or is dying out? Like where should people go moving forward? Uh, for me, you know, a lot of people ask, should I include graphics in my email? Should I make them look all fancy? And for the most part, in order to get the highest open rate and be found in the primary tab, it's you know, wipe out all that stuff. Just keep it text only. Still HTML, not plain text, but text only, like you are sending an email to a friend. 
even bigger companies are doing this now, and the open rates are, are proving uh, to be successful for them for that. Okay. So removing the images, I mean, I know it's hard, but you know, write better copies so that people will click on those links. You guys got anything? I would say just uh, consistency. I think a lot of the time uh, we're not as consistent as we need to be with these very, very important parts of our business. Um, and even if you know, even if it gets to the point, I've been guilty with this my, before in the past, but I'm no longer guilty. Even if I have a week where I don't publish any new content, my list will still get a newsletter that Friday from me. Because what I'll do is I'll just highlight some of my friends' content instead. As long as I'm providing some kind of value and I'm staying front of mind every Friday, there's actually been times where I've skipped a Friday email and I've had tweets from people saying, dude, are you okay? What's going on? Like, where's the email this week? And so, um, you know, that shows that I am, as much as it ha might be hard to believe, I am at least a few people's favorite. And uh, I think that is where we must focus on, is, is that consistency above and beyond anything else. Yeah. I see a lot of, I th for me it's about connection, right? So the video opt-in connecting. The personalization, even though that's a bit of an advanced strategy, I feel like that's where it's moving and it's going because, you know, open rates, there's also now deliverability, which kind of taps on top of what uh, Pat was just saying about the plain text. Uh, plain text is the, it has higher deliverability. It does, and um, just you know, meeting people where they are and having that connection um, is is. Uh, and second to that is, you know, I think in the future, a year two maybe, maybe three. Um, email email deliverability is going to be affected by how engaged the person is on your list, how they're opening, and how they're replying to you. I feel like that's a going to be a measure in the future as the volume of overall emails. I don't know what the stats are, but I can't even imagine. It's probably like six billion a minute or something, right? That gets sent out. Do you know that stat, Noah? No, it's really interesting though. But like, it, that's what it's about. That's why we're emailing. I'm, I, we're opting in so I can teach you something or you know, so I, you can be a part of this service or resource or tool that I have. But I think bottom line, it comes down to connection and being able to connect with people um, and meet them where they're at and, and help them with their problem. Maybe something to, to add to that is that who, who here is like prioritizing Facebook or Pinterest or Twitter or Instagram? Is anyone here prioritizing that? Okay. So the only thing I would encourage you is that these companies are not incentivized to let you talk to your customers. Right. Like they hold your customers hostage, right? So like what did Google do? They changed something, right? Or Facebook, you have like 100,000, do you have fans on Facebook or? Yeah. Oh, no, no, behind you. You have like fans on Pinterest or Facebook or something? And then like when you post something, like what percent actually do something? Yeah. So, f I guess you're awesome. Okay. <laughs> you ruined my point. Jackie is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Jackie. You're the best. I mean, I got to follow you on Facebook. What's your name on Facebook or what's the? Uh, the Debt Myth. The Debt Myth. But what I w besides you ruining my point, uh, what I was going <laughs> to encourage for everybody else is that like on Facebook myself or other people have like 100,000 fans. And go check this out. Go check out a brand or a product or company. Million fans, 20 million likes. And then check out their posts. It's like 1,000 people, right? You're like, where's everybody else doing? Right? So I encourage you guys, if you're not prioritizing growing your email list, it's the most important asset you can have in your business. True. Because Facebook and Google want you to pay to talk to your customers, and they will do whatever it takes to encourage that. And that's what they're doing. That's why they change the rules every six months. Um, a few other things to think about is that I think now there's so many distractions. Like the fact that you guys have sat here for an hour is pretty fucking impressive. <laughs> right? Who here, did anyone here during this hour not check their phone for something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Way to go. See? <laughs> Great I point, I told you. Noah. Exactly. My point exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I told... But think about it, right? Like, I, I honestly can't... I can hardly do anything now for over 30 seconds. Right? I'm just like, oh, that thing, that thing, that thing. Um, and so I do think, like, the people who can get people's attention, not just by being the loudest, but by being the best relationships with your people, will win. Right? So think about, like, attention is just going to get harder. Right, and the people like I think who are genuine, like I don't Pat talk, seems really genuine, right? And I think he really cares and he talks to his people. Like that's where people are going to go gravitate towards. Uh, and then lastly, what I would try to think about is maybe or possibly instead of just email, is there any real time communication you could do in aggregate for your customers? So is there like for SumoMe, uh, we have a Slack group, and so our customers come on and mostly complain, 
Uh, <laughs> but is there any other thing that you can do with your own customers, maybe the, the premium ones, or maybe like test it as a smaller group, like a Facebook group, or Slack group, or Skype group, something like that, where you can actually talk to them on a more regular basis? Uh, I think there's something really interesting there in the future uh, for feedback or for sales or for whatever you want to do in your company. That's awesome. Uh, well, we got a couple minutes, I think. What time is this? What time are we supposed to be done? Let me know. Four. Four. Okay, so we got like five minutes. We got a couple of questions here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so this is a question mainly for Pat. What's up, Thomas? I do. I have heard people saying, what about getting people to get an app on their phone that could have push notifications? Have you experimented with that? And uh, going forward, for any of you guys, mm -hmm. are you going to be prioritizing that over email or trying to build that into your, your funnel? The question was, is, should we should people look into getting an app maybe that can they can you know like pat might you have an app right i do right yeah so they get the app that they can then do push notifications is that by a priority or and what are you guys doing i mean honestly it sounds cool right to have an app and have people get push notifications i haven't really seen that much of a return from the investment to be honest um, and when you have an app you're in the itunes apple ecosystem and they control how much people see your stuff too i think email is by far the best place to communicate um, it, 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 it's cool to have, and some people only consume my content on that, but it's only because I gave them the option. If I didn't give them that option, they'd probably consume it some other way. Yeah, uh, yeah I have a, a software, that a mobile app in development now, out next week, I hope, if all goes <laughs> planned. And we are um, adding in reminder notifications because it's related to cooking and when you need to be in the kitchen. Just like, just little... Uh, for me, it's the, the habit forming triggers, if you will. For me, that's how I. That's cool though. It's a tool. It's a utility. Right. Right. Mine isn't. It's, it's, a it's just an RSS it's, feed right. that no. looks cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, I think there is place for that. And I actually had a conversation with Casey somewhere. Where are you? I saw you in here. Where'd you go? Raise your hand. He might have left. Um, and we talked about that yesterday. They have their uh, their tool is an app, and it's like well. You need to send them, have them, give them the option to add notifications so that they can be reminded to use it, reminded to check it. Because when you have an app, it's all about creating, uh, creating the new habit of using the app, and you've got to give those triggers. Yeah, I personally wouldn't do it for my blog slash podcast audience, uh, but I am considering putting one together for my membership um, community, just because they're paying members, and I think that it would be kind of cool to have an app for them to utilize. That being said, we're perfectly mobile responsive, and so they're kind of using it in that way already. So if I do it, it'll be, I guess, more of a kind of just an additional benefit you know, slash marketing feature than anything else. Not like it's really required. I don't. Yeah. Know. I, yeah. I think the thing to consider, Thomas, is a way of like reengaging uh, existing people or finding new people. So I think the future, mm -hmm. like how many people here can write words? Everybody, <laughs> right? Think about it, right? Anyone could literally go to WordPress.com and put out some stupid shit and call it a blog, right? Um, but I think part of the future with like how to do more marketing or how to get new people is when you differentiate your content either through the quality of it or through the medium, right? So video is not something that you can just you can go make a shit video, but to actually have the screen and have like a nice camera and like you had like a tripod today, I guess that's pretty basic. But <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's a tripod. Uh, he had like microphone. Eight dollar tripod is what it was. <laughs> no, which was cool. I like how you had, like had this affordable thing. So I do think in terms of marketing and, and moving forward to growing a business, I think the differentiation will come either through like free apps or free software. So anyone can write a blog post, but you can't just create free software. But that's a great way to get new customers. So we've done that with like AppSumo. We've created free stuff. SumoMe is a free product that drives customers. Uh, or video or audio, because text is, is pretty easy now for most people to replicate. And I think the bar has been set so high uh, to actually be differentiated. So just something to think about is like, how do you want to stand out and get people to pay attention to you or find you? Thank you. <laughs> oh, what's a recovery mean? <laughs> Shutting me out. He's up front, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean, how much quality can I really send out? Or should, do I care too much? Should I just send stuff out? I mean, you want to send different stuff. Uh, what I would recommend is 
uh, subscribe to people who are competitors and see what they're sending and then send better stuff. Yeah, like it's that. easy. I, I, I like different stuff rather than better Different is stuff. better than better. Better. Yes. <laughs> what does that mean? No, it is. <laughs> Break it down. Different is better than better. Like, I can try and create better content than Pat, and it might actually help people. But if I'm creating different content to Pat, then people are following me because of me and what I'm doing, and not necessarily because my stuff is better than Pat, right? Like, I want people to follow me. I want to be, be people's favorite. That's it. And I believe that that is, that is at the forefront of our industry as online publishers and content providers. And that's what we are. We're almost becoming one-person media companies. Mm -hmm. Think about everything that we do. It's not just Twitter and social, right? It's the blog, it's the podcast, the video, the live video is going to be massive in the next three to five years, and so on and so on. So I, I, I want people to fall in love with my content because of me, because I'm different. And, I'm, and I, I, you know, I play on the fact that I'm British. I play on the fact that I'm not that good looking. I play on the fact that I'm follically challenged. No one's laughing. A few other people in the house <laughs> like that. And I play on the fact that I play on the fact that kind of I'm just that kind of cheeky, chappy, kind of in your face. Let me tell you how it is, kind of guy. Um, and some people like that, and some people don't. I call it marketing like a magnet. I want to attract the best, repel the rest. I want to attract the people that are going to get me <laughs> and what I'm all about. Yeah, baby. Nice. That is that's nice. That's tweetable, by the way, oh, as well. That is let, nice. let me just add something. Sorry, it's my vibe will attract my tribe. <laughs> oh, God. There's oh more. God. No, I'm not huh? in it. I'm no, not in it. Uh, <laughs> let me just give two quick things that you should think about. So, Sean, uh, with AppSumo, we email a million people, and I got to a point where I was so scared to email them. I was like, oh, I'm going to piss them off. What if it's bad? Um, and so let me just do two, two specific suggestions. What I've realized is that the best, I, my favorite emails are when I'm excited to share. And those are the ones I'm sending. I'm like, I can't wait to have people get this in their inbox and just have them know about it. And whether they reply or not, is, that's kind of up to them. Um, but I just think about if you're excited before you hit that send button. Another thing to consider, I think all of you are creating too much content. All of you are writing too many articles but not either high enough quality or not spending enough time promoting it. And just a specific story, I have a friend on his blog, this is a real, well, he's a real human, um, he has 40 articles, 40, right? And in profit, he is making a million dollars a year with only 40 articles. Yes, I can't tell you his name. No, okay, good. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's a really but, good but, friend. But really great, no, but the point is just really interesting to think about because like I know all these guys up here and myself, I have a lot of articles I've written over 16 years. Uh, but it was something to think about from him where he's not actually creating a lot of it, but the one a month he actually does create is insanely amazing. And then he spends a lot of time getting that word out there, and it's a seven-figure business doing that. 